In this video, I may be attempting to repair this Tektronix THS710A. It's one of these portable handheld, truly isolated, because it's one of the truly isolated oscilloscopes. I do have another variant of this, or obviously you've seen my other videos, the 100 megahertz version of this. And I picked this one up for about 85 bucks, but it was sold broken as is, does not power up, does not do nothing, doesn't come with any accessories or anything like that. So, as you can see, the condition of it, it's in pretty rough, well-used condition. This thing definitely has been around the block. You can see that. And it's missing the kickstand thing, too, as well. And someone actually went ahead and cut off the serial, too. But either way it goes, it had a lot of calibration stickers, so it does give me some hope that this thing was recently calibrated because one of the stickers was more recent, which I peeled off right there. It's over there somewhere, so... We'll see what exactly is wrong, but right off the back, you can see that LCD is pretty much screwed. Now, I can actually repair that if it is just a um, polarizer film, which is on top of the LCD, which you can peel it off, remove the glue and stuff, and then reapply a new one. And I'll show you how to do it the correct way. If I do go that route, I may just replace the whole entire LCD assembly, depending on the condition of it overall, pretty much, but... Well, you can see the condition starting off with. I did have to open it up to get this battery door out because it was stuck on there. So I did have to take it apart already. I haven't powered it up or anything yet. We we're going to do that. I got a battery charging right over there that we're going to stick into this thing. And hopefully we'll see some life out of this thing. So I'm going to go and remove this cover here. So it makes it easier to see the display if something does come on. So let's go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and installed a battery in there, and you can see a better look at that LCD right there. Let's go and see if anything happens. Yep, I did see a flash though, but no backlight or nothing. So, But yeah, I think the LCD is actually working. can barely see it. Let me see if I can look at it there. And yeah, I can see it when I looked in. It says I actually passed self-test and everything, so... You can barely see it on camera. I'm trying to angle it where you can see it better, but I can see it in person a little bit better. And yeah, there's even a trace on the screen and stuff like that. It doesn't look too bad, actually. There's a little bit of a DC offset, but not bad, actually. So this thing might actually work. So yeah, no backlight, though. So either the fluorescent tube itself is burnt out or the DC-DC inverter is bad itself, but man i'm happy it does power up and it does show actually a signal and it does say pass self-test so that's a good start right there see his keypad here is really really does i didn't clean up anything yet i just you know powered it on as i'm showing you in the video right now so yeah this is looking promising actually being the fact that it does display so you know cd is not correct so i might be able to even repair this lc depends on what i can get another replacement for it, because i'm gonna look to see if i can actually just get a brand new replacement for it if i can get it for like 80 100 bucks i'm gonna actually buy it but if not and it's like something ridiculous then we'll go ahead and repair this lcd assembly but yeah that is looking promising at least the scope portion and stuff like that works let me go ahead and see if it goes on to the meter side of it yep and I do see it right there. Yeah, it does. So, looks like this thing's actually functional. It's just LCD that's the problem. Or, of course, the inverter too as well. But either way it goes, it does power on and it does show something. So, that tells me, you know, at least the scope and the meter portion of this thing works. Just the problem with the LCD itself. So, I'm going to go ahead and tear this apart a little bit more further, of course, just to see what um, part number that LCD is and stuff and look it up and we'll go from there I guess. So as you can see I went ahead and turned this down much further. I went ahead and got the main board right now I just you know have this of course actually you know hanging over there and then the keypad goes over there that just fell on the floor. And I went ahead and did further testing. One of the things I wanted to test was this DC DC inverter to make sure it was actually putting out high voltage. First, I tested the components before powering up to make sure nothing was short and everything was good. Tested fine. Then I went ahead and tested for high voltage. And yes, there was high voltage on there. So I went ahead and did one step further. I found the tube that's a little bit larger than this and hooked it up to the terminals. And sure enough, did light up and it stayed on. So 
I know the DC DC inverter is fine, and the problem unfortunately is with this tube itself. Even though I'm kind of surprised because I have seen much, much worse, and I replaced much worse on other Tektronics equipment where this was pretty much completely black on both sides and further up. So I'm shocked that it failed, but obviously probably likely the film it opened up and, you know, the argon and mercury is not uniting. So obviously you're not going to get no light. So I do have to replace that tube if I want to get this going. Thankfully, this is a commercial sharp display and it won't be too hard to source a new tube for this thing. So that's what I'm going to try to do next. And for anyone that wants to know the part number, they just want to go ahead and replace the display. There it is. Unfortunately, the display is about 150 bucks or so. It's the cheapest I could find it if you do want to just replace the display. But they are quite serviceable, thankfully. And that's the other thing, too. If I do, once I do get the bulb replaced, I do have to deal with this polarizer issue. And I do have to take this apart, take the polarizer, and then remove the adhesive. The optical glue, they call it, that's, you know, adhering the polarizer to the actual CD itself. And what damages that is UV rays over time, you know, ends up, you know, making the glue itself not glue no more. Pretty much it becomes brittle and stuff like that and starts changing color. And that's what causes that weird color right there. So I will have to take that out and then I'll go and reapply another polarizer film back on there. And this display should be 100% functional. Of course, I could do it also the easy way too and just change the whole entire display assembly, which you can find about 150 bucks, and that will fix it. But either way it goes, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can source a new tube for this thing. Once I can get a new tube for it, then I'll deal with the polarizer issue and stuff. And that will be for another video because I do have to, unfortunately, find another tube that will fit into there. And then once I fit in there, I can solder the wires back on there. And then put everything nice and neat. And then I can deal with this polarizer issue. Which I'll do in a separate video. Because I do want to do a video on this. Showing people how to actually remove this polarizer film that's on top of the LCD carefully. Without breaking the LCD of course. And then removing the optical glue that they put on there. And then reapplying new UV glue with the new you know, polarizer on there to repair the display. And make it 100% again. So... I'll do that in another video once I get the parts order for this thing pretty much. So this concludes this part one of this video. So I went ahead and decided to see if I could actually get this LCD repair before I go ahead and order parts and stuff like that. Just because I want to know if I do have to order a new LCD or if I can actually repair it. And thankfully it looks like I'm going to be able to actually repair this one because it came out actually pretty good. Nice and clean. Was able to get all the UV glue off. And did remove the polarizer. This is not as easy as the sun because you can't just simply lift this off and, you know, you're on your way pretty much. You're going to have a lot of that UV glue on there. And that's not easy to deal because you can't just remove it easily of alcohol and stuff like that. I actually have to use the liquid that I use to repair other LCDs and stuff because I do repair LCD panels as well and stuff. To remove and it took quite some time of scraping and using a razor blade making sure not to nick the glass and stuff like that to get all the glue off and then clean it up and stuff it took a good hour or so so this is not something for the fate of heart i recommend this only to those that are experienced in re um pairing lcd panels like for phones or you know for example other equipment and stuff like that because it does take time and you got to be very careful that you don't break the Bond wire is going to the LCD and also end up bending and breaking the LCD itself. But thankfully, this came out, as you can see, really nice and clean. No leakage, no nothing, no cracks. So, yep, I'll be able to order a new UV polarizer. And the LCD should work once I get the backlight and all that, of course, fixed too as well. But, yeah, thankfully, I'll be able to repair this LCD and this LCD is salvageable. So... In the next coming up part of the video, when I do the next part, that's when I'll have all the parts and then I'll reassemble it. When you are cleaning off the glue, you want to make sure you completely disassemble the LCD and that is to remove the um, diffuser assembly as well. And this is what you call a diffuser. Pretty much the fluorescent tube goes through this edge right here where it lights up. And once it lights up the edge, it spreads the light in between this glass piece right here, which you can see makes the light and spreads the light nice and even and this here is the diffuser part so when you're looking at it 
it's nice and even and you're not getting no hot spots and stuff like that. That's what the diffuser assembly does. But you want to make sure you do remove this and don't get any OCA glue remover and stuff like that onto there. Because if you do, then you can damage that. And then, of course, the backlight's not going to be nice and even. You're going to see spots and stuff like that. So always completely disassemble the LCD when you're doing it. But I'm going to go and get this halfway together, at least so that way I can see if the LCD still works and stuff like that. And then the next part, that's when I'll go ahead and reapply, you know, the new polarizer, of course, to the LCD itself. Maybe I'll put the glue back on there, of course, and stuff, and I'll show you how to get the bubbles if I do. I might just leave it without it, because it really doesn't need it, but who knows, that's up to me if I decide to or decide not to. Either way it goes, you don't have to adopt your note. Just make sure when you get the polarizer that you cut it to, of course, the same all the way, of course, to the size of LCD, which is a 4.7 inch. So make sure you do that. And then when you do reassemble it, of course, make sure you got no dust or any, you know, spots and stuff like that on the LCD when you reassemble it. So it looks good. But overall, I'm going to go and get this halfway together and I'll be right back once I'm done. So went ahead and somewhat reassembled it just to test to see if the LCD actually still works. And here's the old piece of polarizer. And you can see right there. Yep, no lines, no nothing, which is what I was checking for. And yeah, it is fully working. You can see right there where you can see it. Obviously, without the polarizer, you're not going to be able to see anything. But if you put the polarizer there, you'll be able to see it pretty much. And there's no lines or horizontal or vertical lines. So LCD is you know gonna be successful repaired because that's one of the things i check for once i'm done is to make sure i didn't break any of the bond connections going to the lcds and there's no horizontal or vertical lines and there is none so this lcd is good to go i just gotta order a new polarizer film and it should work and then let's go put it in meter mode and you can see it a lot more better that way there and yep she is good so New polarizer film will actually fix this and this concludes the video for part one.